Chinchi's Canoe by Nicola I. Campbell and Kim Lafave. The morning sun was shining so bright she she at Co had to squint. She was on her way back to Indian Residential School and this year she wasn't alone. Shinchi, her younger brother, was coming too. Yeah, Mom, Dad, Baby Shulteko, Shinchi, and Shichiako were sitting together on the porch, waiting for the cattle truck that would soon pick them up. Dad, it'll be summertime when we come home. Can you please build us a dugout canoe of our own? Shinchi said. My children, don't you like paddling with me anymore? Said their dad as he pulled them close. We love paddling with you, Shishetko said, but we're getting way too old and I want to learn to paddle all alone, said Shinchi, who was six years old. Last year on her first day of Indian residential school, Shishietko had been punished because she could not understand the English words. Then they cut her long braids and threw them away and washed her head with kerosene. And so that morning before the sun rose, Shishietko had asked, Yeah, can you cut our hair today? Afterwards, Shinchi, Shishietko, and Yea went up to the mountain to put their braids away. When the cattle truck arrived, their dad tucked a tiny canoe into Shishietko's hand. My children, said their mother with tears in her eyes, if we could, we would keep you here at home. We would never, ever let you go, but it's the law that forces us to send you away to residential school. Yes, squeeze them so tight they could hardly breathe. We'll be waiting for you to come home, she said. Then Shinchi and Shishietko climbed into the back of the cattle truck with all of the children from their Indian reservation. Dust came in waves, getting in their eyes and their noses until they could hardly breathe. It followed the truck like a snake all along the valley. My Shinchi, we will not see our family until the sockeye salmon return. These are the things you must always remember, Shishietko said, gesturing at the trees, mountains, and river below. All night when you go to sleep, remember the tug of the fish when you and Dad pulled the necks in and we made smoked and wind-dried salmon. Shinshi could not help himself. He looked at everything, the mountain with the trail that led to the caves, the deer in the field by the house. He memorized every fishing spot, the place where he caught the great big frog, the grasshoppers, the crickets and the slugs, until the rattle bump of the cattle truck rocked him to sleep. Shinchi was dreaming when he heard Shishietko say, It's time to wake up now, my Shinchi. And when he opened his eyes, it was dusk, and all he could see was the dark silhouette of the church steeple. Remember, my English name is Mary, and your English name is David. And don't forget, we are not allowed to talk to each other until next June. Shishietko gave him a tiny canoe that their father had made. This, my Shinshi, is for you. No matter where you go, no matter what you do, be careful to keep it hidden. When they got off the truck, the priests and sisters said, Juniors and intermediates stand single file in separate lines. Boys stand here, girls stand over there. And then single file, they marched inside. That night in the junior girl's wing, Shishietko wondered if her Shinshi was okay. He was used to sleeping near his sisters and he had never slept alone. Down the hall in the junior boy's wing, 
Shin Shi lay in bed wide awake. He held his tiny canoe safe in his hands. The sweet scent of cedar smelled just like his dad. Dad said the spring salmon would come up river first. Then the sockeye come in the summertime. And that's when we can go home again. Finally, he drifted off to sleep. They went to Mass once each day. That's when they learned how to pray. And for half of the day they worked, and the other half they went to school. The girls did cooking, cleaning, knit mittens and scarves, and they laundered and sewed everyone's clothes. The boys learned how to farm, do carpentry, blacksmithing. And three times a day, all the children went outside to play in wind, rain, hail, or snow. In the dinner hall, the boys and girls sat on opposite sides of the room, brothers and sisters not allowed to talk to one another. They made up sign language to say hi or I miss you. For breakfast, the children ate porridge and burnt toast. Through the doors, they could see their teachers carrying steaming plates of bacon, eggs, and potatoes from the farm. For lunch, they ate thin soup, and dinner was hard buns with stew. For dinner, the teachers had meat, vegetables, and corn. The children were never given enough food. When autumn was over and winter arrived, the days were short and the weather cold. Shinshi was lonely and he was hungry. He missed his mom, his dad, his yaya. He missed Shishietko and baby Shultatko. He snuck out the back door and ran to the river nearby his school. He stood there with his tiny dugout canoe. Shinshi could not help himself. He looked at everything, listened to each crystal snowflake that danced down from the sky and fell onto his face. He breathed the cool breath of winter until the land was covered in a blanket of fresh snow. Finally, when eagle song echoed through the valley, traveling just beyond reach, he sang his father's prayer song and his voice echoed from mountain peak to mountain peak. Shinshi placed his canoe in the river, knowing that the current would carry it safely home. Then Shinshi made a friend. His English name was John. Little mischief times two, they learned how to steal food. In the orchards, they found apples, in the root cellar, carrots and potatoes. To their delight, one day they discovered preserved cherries, only to realize that they were black olives instead. Early one morning, when spring had finally set in, Shishietko snuck down to the river. To her surprise, she heard her grandfather's song. Her Shinshi was already there with his fishing line. I'm checking to see if the sockeye salmon are here, he said in deep concentration. Not yet, my Shinshi, but they will come. When the sockeye finally swam up the river, the dust rose around the cattle truck like a great big butterfly that followed them all the way home. Shinshi could hardly wait. Shishietko, he asked over and over again. How much longer till we get home? Little mischief, you will get there soon, Shishietko said with sparkles in her eyes. When the cattle truck arrived at last, their mother and Yea ran to greet them. Oh, my grandchildren, we missed you, Yea said, squeezing them tight. Your dad is in the woodshed, said their mother as she hugged them too. This time she had tears of happiness in her eyes. Shishietko and Shinshi ran as fast as they could 
all the way to the woodshed. There they found their dad carving them their very 